thank you for oh, your time. Oh, of course, of course. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's my job. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me the name again? It's Organiz an organization for the minorities of India. And those minorities would be both uh, ethnic and religious minorities of India who um, are not always uh, represented. So underrepresented ethnic and religious minorities. Mm -hmm. And you are J dot J A. D A. Patrick Peter. 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 Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. And I have an information packet here that we've uh, that we put together, and um, <clears throat> and I'm sure that you're familiar with the World Hindu Congress, which yes. is in town, which uh, is a uh, is a point of concern um, for us as uh, as citizens, as voters, and um, and also as advocates of uh, of those who are underrepresented, because the World Hindu Congress, um, under the guise. Of, of a unifying event is actually a partisan political event. And um, I will be quoting, um, I'll be quoting Congressional Representative Tulsi Gabbard when I say this. Tulsi Gabbard was actually invited um, to be the, uh, the chair and the chief speaker and um, she actually um, rejected this and denounced it and disassociated and, um, and labeled it as a, a as a, a partisan political event. This was after she was made uh, aware by um, by Organization for Minorities of India as well as other organizations of, um, so, of some of the, the happenings um, concerning the RSS and the BJP who are two groups uh, who are putting together this Hindu Congress. Um, and what was the other one? RSS and? The RSS is the Rashtriya Swayam Savik Sangh and then the um, BJP, which is the Bharatiya Janata Party. Thank you. Yes, and um, and uh, the RSS is a paramilitary organization. It's an all-male, uniformed, armed, um, with the uh, with the goal of uh, exterminating non-Hindus from India. Um, this is done um, by means of murder, and then also by um, by forced assimilation, by calling by uh, putting these others into a single group. Um, and then trying to reclassify them as Hindus, these others actually constitute the majority of the population. So they classify um, them as other, even though they are the majority. Even though they're the majority, okay. we're called minorities. It's kind of like colored people everywhere in the world, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so um, because of the because of the violence that has been used to um, to advance. Um, things like Hindus for um, because of the violence that the RSS and the BJP has used um, in the past because of these pogroms um, that has killed Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, um, Dalits, uh, even the uh, outcasts and the lower caste Hindus because of all of this um, because of all of this violence that has they're been, targeting Muslims right they're targeting uh, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no problem. Like I said, thank you for listening. Um, Sikhs, um, Dalits, um, as well as uh, lower caste and outcast, other low caste and outcast Hindus. So um, many of the Shudra class are underrepresented, and um, <clears throat> pogroms. If I were to use just a specific example, um, 2002 in Gujarat, there was a specific pogrom that targeted. Uh, uh, well over 3,000 Muslims, their lives, their homes, their businesses. Um, Christians were also um, dismembered in this, in this attack. Um, but this is something that has gone on for years and years um, and has been going on really heavily for the last century. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, pride that's been stated by the RSS and the BJP mm -hmm. in the way that they have done politics um, using things like propaganda and, and kind of like circumnavigating a direct approach. So they, they're proud that they have kind of inch, edged their way into American politics without anybody knowing. Um, and uh, Tulsi Gabbard has become aware of this. Um, and so, like I said, I'm using her words when I say that this is a, a partisan political event. We also want to make um, other, other congressional representatives aware of this. Um, but we also want to 
kind of kind of give a, a, a warning because when um, when congressional representatives show up at um, show up at uh, events like this, mm-hmm. it, it associates them with the ideology. Mm-hmm. So if there's an ideology that has been presented by the RSS, there has been violence that has been perpetrated by the RSS, and then you have the chair of the RSS speaking at this event when 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 Hindu leaders associate themselves with the with this Hindu ideology, they will always be seen as Hindu. Right. They'll never be seen as representatives of the people. And we want all of our representatives to represent us. Right. And so that's why I'm appreciative of you taking this time to 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 hear what we have to say so that we can can be a little bit more representative so that you know our voices can be heard. This packet um, has some of the information that I've talked about, as well as a lot more. It uh, it shows some of the. Um, it, it it will give you um, <clears throat> a little bit more of Tulsi Gabbard's um, specific statement, uh, as well as the yeah, of course, yeah. as well as the context of the statement. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll also see some other RSS members calling critics of the RSS cockroaches. Um, you can see where uh, they all, they use those terms. One of one of the speakers at the conference has actually on Twitter in the past month used that exact term, mm. okay. you know as well as insects. San Sanu. How do you spell it? S A N. S A N. K R A N T. K A. Wait, sorry. Uh, Krant. K R A N T. Sanu. S A N U. And his his name's listed in here. To describe uh, uh, critics of the RSS. Thank you. And you also find um, a, a little bit of information about um, an initiative that was done where they were um, taking the youth and passing out um, weapons. These specific weapons are called trishuls. They're um, they're a trident that's associated with um, with the religion and with the ideology. Um, and um, it would be used to ceremonially kill um, the kill the, the these groups that are being persecuted, or yeah, yes. Oh. yes, and they've these trishuls that have been distributed by this group, uh, and the information to in children, here, to to to, to young to, to youth, use. I have, have specifically been called out by Human Rights Watch as being used in pogroms against Muslims. Okay, and then uh, yeah, so. And after all of the, the, the controversy and the attention because of that, um, they actually went back and changed the changed the actual uh, item, changed the actual trishul, so that it was like, I think it's nine inches now, but but they, they get around the laws. Still a weapon. Still a weapon. Right. And the, the, the whole reason that they give they gave out these weapons was to condition the minds of these young people. And the reason that they wanted to condition their mind is it says that they conditioned the mind to kill. And so, here we have an... And this is, this is actually, so there's actually a press statement in here about the founder of the World Hindu Congress okay. uh, praising distribution of these trishuls and saying that um, this particular one, he says, well, you can't kill with it, but um, symbols, are, um, these symbols like, are associated with the mind. Uh, actually, if you can flip through... Yeah. I'll find it. Yeah, you can find the exact phrasing. I think it's uh, one before that. Before Yeah, so, and I think it's this paragraph. This one? Yeah. This one, okay. What does he say, Jada? So his name is Swami. Vigya, Vigya, Vigya Nanan. Okay, yeah. So that's the one he's talking about. And so it says the Swami, who elsewhere calls for establishing a Hindu state, made his comments in, in May 2003, uh, in a May 2003 interview with India's Outlook magazine, um, where he stated, yeah. uh, "Who will protect the masses? Not the police or the army. Um, they are they are unfit for it." The Trishul sends a message that we should stand and fight. You can't kill with the Trishul, but symbols and ideas are interconnected by the law of association. When the mind gets gets ready, everything is possible. This um, 
this is this is we can see this in in in, in history um we can go back to recent history with pogroms in america in the south um we can go back a little bit more than that to um to uh to nazi germany but we always see when there's a a full frontal military attack before they pull out the guns they pull out the propaganda and what they do is they prepare the minds of the people for the carnage that is to come and when 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 the carnage comes then the people who are ready to participate the ready the people who are ready to to stand by and watch and then the people who are ready to, to be the victims. The mind is conditioned in different ways. Um, one of the things that he said, Trishel com- prepares the mind to kill, but there's also propaganda that is done to, um, to lessen the lives, um, to, to lessen the value of the lives of these people so that the ones who are not actually killing, but the ones who are standing by watching, they have less value on these people's lives. Um, that's the power of propaganda. That's also the power of things like cow culture, when um, one human life is compared to one thousandth of a cow's life, when they say that a thousand cow- humans is worth one cow. So taking and removing the value from human life um, is preparation for warfare. We've seen it happen, um, like I say, we've seen it happen in Nazi Germany, we've seen it happen in America in the 1960s and 1970s, and then we've also seen it in India in the 80s, in the 90s, and as, in, as recent as 2008 with Odisha, 2002 with, uh, with Gujarat, we, this, these things happen again and again. And, um, yeah, like I said, thank you for, for, for taking the time with us to, to take these matters seriously. Thank you. Um, so th- thank you for bringing this report. Um, it's very comprehensive, and this is exactly what I'll be able to uh, show Ted and Subby, our district director, um, who will then pass it along to our chief of staff. Um, I will say that um, we are um, aware of how many of our constituents feel about World Hindu Congress. Um, over the course of the past couple of days, we've seen, we, we have received hundreds of calls um, you know, about people voicing their opinions on you know, what they believe um, in regards to World Hindu Congress, BHP, and RSSS, and why they believe or do not believe that um, Congressman Krishna Murthy should be in attendance. Um, so we know, I believe we know um, a general summary of what um, these, what this conference means and you know the the two different organizations that make up this conference um but this is a perfect you know in-depth summary that um will be shared um with the higher ups awesome. um so your voices are 100 percent heard Thank believe you. me I, I really um we as an office we can listen to what our constituents say um, we can make note of it, mm-hmm. we can compile it, we can pre- mm-hmm. present it to the congressman, mm-hmm. um, but we cannot speak on behalf of the congressman, of we course. cannot make his decisions, and, um, and we also have to leave our personal politics out of it, um, because, you know, all our actions, um, what we do, what we say represents the congressman. Um, so the most that we can do as an office is just to document all the constituents that contact our office, all the meetings that we have on a particular uh, particular um, subject matter, and um, to compile it for our higher ups. And thank you um, for doing so, so this, you know, in terms of your cause and World Hindu Congress, mm-hmm. a, ma- a face-to-face meeting is fantastic. So awesome. So thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah and just um, to recap and just like a, a, a brief statement of, of, of what's going on, um, Sang Paravar. Um, is is a is, is an umbrella name for these groups mm-hmm. for like the RSS, the VJ, the oh, okay. VSB and others. So Sang Paravar groups are um or the Hindutva, which is Hindu supremacy, the advance of this Hindu cause, um, has been called by the CIA, um, the Department of Defense, has been called religious militant organizations. The the, the CIA World Factbook specifically um, labeled uh, the VHP under uh, 
political pressure groups right. and named it a religious militant organization. Right. And the RSS, also under political pressure groups, they labeled as a nationalist organization. Yeah, we were aware of that one. Okay. Yes, yeah. we were. Okay. Yeah, and Thank so, you. yeah, multiple organizations. I didn't know the, didn't know the umbrella name. So. Yeah, there's some. Do you know, could you, um, do you know how to spell that by any chance? Um, it's in the report, but it's S A N G H. Oh. S A N G H. Second word, Paravar, P A R. P A R. I V A R. It's kind of like the umbrella term for all three organizations. Uh, as well as other affiliated organizations. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But those are the primary three. Okay. And, and what, what puts them, what groups them together is an ideology. And, and that ideology um, not only is dangerous, but is responsible for violence in the past. And because it's, it's responsible for violence in the past, any association with this group in the present, you know, could damage elections in the future. That's, 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 that's pretty much our warning. You know what I mean? Is that, you know, voters care about lives, you know, even if the song power of our groups don't. Um, so thank you for listening to it. Thank you very much.